Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Fungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, we have a Tunisian startup refurbishing shoes and leather bags. And we take a look at the numerous artists who performed at this year's Broccoli City Festival here in Washington, DC. Let's get on with the show. And let's start the show with some highlights of the latest entertainment news from around the world. In music news, Nigerian singer Bana Boy has made history by becoming the first African musician to sell out the City Field Stadium in New York City. The Grammy-winning Afrobeat star performed to a crowd of more than 41,000 people during his Love Damini tour. In film news, the South African premiere of the popular Barbie movie took place at the Mall of Africa in Johannesburg with many fans, celebrities and influencers showing off Barbie-inspired outfits in attendance. The premiere event was hosted by Warner Music Africa and featured a pink carpet, a pink parade and a pink-themed dress code. And here is more music news. Broccoli City Festival, one of the largest urban music festivals, was held on July the 15th in Washington, D.C. Numerous artists performed music genres, including hip-hop, R&B, and Afrobeats, delivering unforgettable moments for their fans. VOA's Sims Lomami has this story, narrated by Michelle Joseph. Thousands of fans gathered in the iconic Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium in D.C. to watch performances from a myriad of artists of hip-hop and R&B to Afrobeats. As the rain and sunshine battled for the limelight, fans like Karen Karthoff could not keep their eyes off their idols. I love the artists that they've had, the variety of music that we've had. Um, we're going to go out into the little community there and look at some of the shops and stuff but so far it's been a great experience we've loved it it's my first music festival so festival attendees and artists alike say the atmosphere was filled with vibrant energy afrobeat stars from nigeria divine ikobor who goes by his stage name rima and ahmed ololade who goes by asake ignited the stage and energized the crowd with their music Behind the scenes, Saucy Santana, a former makeup artist turned rapper, took the opportunity to share what he says are the secrets of his success. I'm being original, being myself. Um, I feel like it's easy to wake up every day and be yourself versus worrying about what somebody else is going to worry about. You know, what we'll work for other people, just do you. One of the most unexpected moments was when it began raining at the same time R&B singer Courtney Michaela or Coco Jones sang a cover of a famous American R&B group, SWV's song, Rain. Oh, it's been good. We just sat out in the rain for Coco Jones. She was amazing. Uh, I mean, weather and all, we're having a good time out here. Let us see the black and brown folks coming together, have a good time and celebrate, and I'm loving every minute of it. Due to the weather, some artists weren't able to make it, but for fans who may have missed their idols, the lineup of the artists who showed up made up for the loss. Fans and vendors from across the United States travel each year for the Broccoli Festival in Washington, D.C. The festival represents a perfect blend of the vibrancy of the northern regions of the U.S. and the warm hospitality of the South. For Sims Lumami, Michelle Joseph, VOA News. And now let's turn to some fashion news. A Tunisian startup is refurbishing shoes and leather bags by adding a pop of color. Co-founder Sharif Zarui says Kenenti's aim is to reduce waste and inspire eco-conscious individuals. Let's take a look. This Tunisian startup is giving new life to old shoes with a pop of color. Kenenti repairs and revitalizes shoes and leather bags. It aims to reduce waste and inspire eco-conscious consumerism. One of the most significant goals of our startup, Kaneti, 
is to change consumer behavior. We aim to empower customers to take responsibility for their purchases, encourage them to buy products that are environmentally conscious, opt for recycled products, and avoid purchasing shoes made in a fast fashion manner. Zarui currently leads a team of 10 artists. He hopes to create his own shoe brand in the future using only recycled leather, as well as expand the startup to other countries. Actor and playwright Ryan J. Haddad crafts plays that are sometimes challenging, sometimes dark, and occasionally humorous. Through his work, he reflects on the experiences living with a disability, finds new ways to make theater accessible to all, and calls for more opportunities for disabled performers. BOA's Aaron Feder brings us more from New York City. Here is more. Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me my new philosophy? The teacher gave a D on last week's homework. My theater career began crawling around the living room when I was two and three years old. I would be watching Disney movie cartoons, princess movies, and just want to act them out. I couldn't walk. At the time, my primary mode of transportation was crawling around either on my hands and knees, or later I learned to just crawl on my knees and sort of hobble around that way. And maybe sometimes I would pretend I was Prince Charming, but often I was pretending that I was a princess. Disney movies were my way in. Grindr is a hookup app that tells you how close you are to the nearest gay, bi, or straight man. I went to a liberal arts school called Ohio Wesleyan in Delaware, Ohio. At a school where I had a theater scholarship and was encouraged to be a theater major, the professors were having difficulty finding ways for me to fit in, into the plays that were offered. And I didn't know if it was because I wasn't good enough or because I walked with a walker and they weren't quite sure what to do with somebody who walked with a walker. So then I met Tim Miller, a gay and loudly political and outspoken performance artist. Tim Miller comes to universities still to this day and does these workshops teaching people how to make autobiographical performance. And Tim said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You are supposed to be telling your own stories. You are supposed to be playing Ryan and not pretending that his name is Tony or Paul or whatever fictional name you make up. You're not supposed to hand it to another actor. Uh, you're supposed to play yourself. You can do it. You can make a career of it. Your voice matters. Your gay, disabled, voice matters, and I made a senior project that was called Hi, Are You Single? 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 I know my worth as a performer and storyteller, and I, I'm not gonna say I wasn't willing to give up because that just sounds like I'm, I'm catering to an inspiring inspiration porn narrative of empowered disability, and I'm very fortunate, and I've worked very, very hard to get here, and I'm not taking it for granted, but I'm also not surprised, because I knew this was where I was meant to be, and I wasn't going to allow anyone to tell me otherwise. Now to art news. The traveling art exhibition Icons on Ammo Boxes stopped in New York City in early May, featuring the works of Ukrainian artist Alexander Klemenko and Sonia Atlantova. The two artists paint traditional Christian icons on real ammunition boxes from the Ukrainian front lines, symbolically portraying life overcoming death. Nina Vishneva has the story narrated by Anne Rice. These 17 ammunition boxes have seen actual fighting on the front lines in Ukraine. And in May, they were in New York City, part of an exhibit called Icons on Ammo Boxes. Ukrainians Alexander Klimenko and Sonia Atlantova created these pieces. 
Klimenka started working on the project in 2014, the same year Russia annexed Crimea. I asked the guys, what do you do with those afterwards? And they said they burned them. But I saw the box lid, and it amazed me how much it looked like a classical board used for painting icons. The Church of St. Ignatius Loyola hosted the exhibit. Father Denis Yusalonia, the church pastor, says he was so stunned and amazed by the art that he wanted to purchase several pieces for the church to support Ukraine. I have a favorite of the Madonna, and this one is capturing, this one is capturing me. This was the second, saying, do I want this? Uh, but John the Baptizer is significant, uh, but I think a Madonna has the sense of uh, sorrow. The goal of the exhibition was not only to introduce New Yorkers to the icons, but also to sell some of them to raise funds for the volunteer hospital in Ukraine. For Nina Vishnyova in New York, NRI's VOA News. And now to some sports news. Leo Messi, arguably the best footballer ever, has made a stunning entrance into the Major League Soccer, playing for Inter Miami in Florida. Messi showcased his magic on the pitch during his debut match, securing a dramatic victory against Cruz Azul. BOS Kali Abdu brings us the story and explores the potential impact of Messi's arrival in the MLS. Let's check it out. Leo Messi's arrival in the MLS has ignited a wave of excitement among football fans across the country. With an illustrious career at FC Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain, Messi is already a football legend. But his move to the United States adds a new dimension to his legacy. Messi's arrival has already seen a surge in ticket sales, drawing a sellout crowd of more than 22,000 people, including celebrities like LeBron James, Kim Kardashian, and Serena Williams. He is also expected to have a huge impact on his new club's social media. There's a huge expectation here in the U.S. Uh, because Leo Messi is going to play here. Actually, there has been a huge growth uh, in the inter of Miami social media. So the interior of Miami Instagram had 1 million followers. And then when we learned that Messi would come here to play, it grow super fast. They went from 1 million followers to 7 million followers in just two days. Messi's debut performance not only thrilled the home crowd, but also captured the attention of soccer enthusiasts worldwide. His presence in the MLS is expected to attract more global viewership and boost the league's international reputation. So there's a lot of expectation. Not only Americans are going to be watching how Messi plays here in the US, but also people from Argentina, from Europe, from Africa, from all over the world are going to be watching the MLS. So the MLS is going to have more fans now because Messi is coming here. While Messi's focus remains on contributing to Inter Miami's success on the field, his off-field impact is undeniable. The MLS has now become a destination for top talent and is sense poised to elevate its global stature. In addition, Messi is also joined by his former Barcelona colleagues, Sergio Busquets and Jordi Alba, who have also made the switch to the MLS. As Leo Messi's journey in the MLS unfolds, the excitement and anticipation continue to grow. Fans and players alike are eager to witness the magic he brings to American soccer. Reporting from Washington, D.C., this is Kali Abdu for VOA News. Thank you so much for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone.